everybody, it's Mrs. Cantrell, and I'm going to show you how to edit the white background out of the surreal collage you made in your last video using this really cool application called Pixlr. Pixlr is a nice Photoshop-like tool that you can use online for free. So the first thing we need to do is actually take a picture that we're going to edit, and we're going to take a picture of the collage you just made in the last video. So I'm going to pull up my camera here. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that my edges are kind of as parallel with the edge of my camera as possible. Um, it's fine if you don't get the entire thing in, but you really do want to try to get most of your collage in here. Welcome to my messy garage again. So I'm also going to make sure my fingers are not in the way. I'm going to crop off this top part. So I'm going to hold it from here. I'm going to click. Okay, done and done. Now that I've taken my picture, I'm going to go to pixlr.com and you get two options, advanced pixlr or playful pixlr. I know it sounds like we want playful, but we're actually going to go to the advanced option. It's the most like Photoshop. Uh, the playful one is just basically a really simplified version uh, that has fewer options, um, but it's version. So we're going to go to open image over here on the left. And my most recent picture is going to pop up right here. I'm going to open that up. All right, before we continue, I find that it's really important to share a tip with you. Control Z. Control Z is your shortcut for the undo button. And if you ever forget that, you can always um, go up here to edit undo. And I think there's another way to later on. But if you hit control Z, that's really the easiest way to always just go back and undo your progress. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to show you here is you can actually zoom in and out of your whole desktop area that you're looking at. You can zoom in and out by dragging this. So if you want to see less of your picture, more of your picture, get more detailed. Zooming is going to be really helpful later on. You can also use your two fingers on your mouse pad to stretch the picture open and then shrink it again. Very similar to how you would use on like a smartphone. Okay, so those are two helpful things before we go move on. Control Z and zooming or zooming out. What we wanna do here is select and remove the background of our picture. So I'm going to actually use this um, selection tool that looks like a square. And I'm also going to exit out of this advertisement so I can see a little better. Zoom. And I'm going to crop down a rectangular shape, making sure to include all of my actual collage. So I don't want to accidentally like crop off his hand or his fingers here. And it's okay if I still leave. Um, like I can see a little bit of the background here. That's fine because I can actually edit that out in the next part. But I do just want to zoom in as much as I can. So once I have that selected, I'm going to go up here to the select button and I'm going to click invert selection. So now it's actually selecting everything else that is around my picture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit backspace, which is the same as hitting delete. And there we go. Um, if you end up wanting to fill up this entire space in the back with some sort of a background, then you can leave it like this. I'm going to click off to the side here so it deselects. But I do want to show you, you have the option of kind of shrinking your space down as well. If you use the crop tool, you can resize your whole picture here to whatever size you want. And that might be determined by whatever background you want as well. But what we're going to focus on is just this cat headed person right here. I want to edit out everything else so that way I can completely replace the background. Okay, so once I've cropped down what I want, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. 
The first thing that will make the rest of this easier is to go ahead and erase like any of these extra little edges here. So I'm going to show you the eraser tool. The eraser tool is over here on the left. And you can, if you just hover before you click, you'll see it says eraser. And your eraser can have fuzzy edges. There's the brush up here. If you click on it, you can also change it so that way it has more like a harder edge, which is what I prefer. Um, you can change the size nice and easy here, or you can also drag the size bar here to get a different size brush. But I'm going to start with the number 20 brush here. And I'm going to click my mouse pad and drag. Click and drag. And I'm just going to go ahead and edit all of this messy stuff out. And I know it still looks messy, but it will help us to eventually select that entire area. I'm also going to do that over my hole punches. Being really careful not to actually erase on the figure too. All right, so that'll help. Now there are two different tools we can use to help edit out the background. This one here called the wand select is really good at selecting things that are all one color. So like if I click on this area that I just erased, it's all white. So if I click on that and then hit backspace, which is your delete button, it gets rid of it. Anytime you see these um, black and gray squares in the background, that means it's transparent. So you could end up putting this picture on top of a different picture and you'll be able to see right through that background. So I can go ahead and click on these eraser areas and delete those. That's nice and easy. But now how do I get rid of the rest of these areas? Well, I can zoom in a little bit more. Sometimes it helps. And I can start by clicking some of these little negative spaces. And if I use the wand, you'll see that it just automatically uh, selects the tool for me and I can delete it. Select, delete. Not super easy. But you have to be careful because if you try to do that for your entire background and if you have a really light picture like I do, watch what happens. If I click select on that background, it thinks that I'm selecting also the white of the hand, the white highlights in the jacket. And if I click delete, <clears throat> it gets rid of all of that. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit control Z. And now I have to get a little pickier. So I'm not going to be able to use my wand tool, but I can go over here to the lasso select. And if I use the lasso select tool, oh, actually pause for a moment. Before I start selecting things again, notice that the blinking line is still going all around here. That means that something is still selected. We need to know how to unselect that. Right up here on the top where it says select, you can deselect, which gets rid of that line. Um, you also want to be aware that if you are ever clicked on another tool down here and you're trying to actually just select something, you have to use one of these things. Like even if you just need to go back to the normal arrow tool, you have to be clicking on it. So always be aware of what is activated over here on the left. All right, so going back here to the lasso tool, I want to be able to kind of freely outline my cat person here. So what I'm going to do is um, very specifically go to the magnetic lasso. So there's three, di four different types of lassos here. And I'm going to be honest and tell you that I don't know exactly what all of them do. I'm sure you could figure it out on Google. Um, but this magnetic one works really well. And I'm going to start down here at the edge of my figure. And I just have to click it once. And you will see that little circle appear. And I'm just going to drag my mouse all around, trying to be really careful, just like I'm cutting really carefully with scissors. But I don't have to press on the mouse pad. All I have to do is just drag my finger around on the mouse pad. This is where it might be really helpful to zoom in a little bit more so you can get around more specific details.
the very last space that you select, when you click on that, it will close this line automatically with where you started. So I'm going to try to get to the edge of my figure all the way back down here. <clears throat> it's good I was already able to get the inside of those areas there. All right, so what I'm going to do now is put a background behind my cat person. So the first thing I need to do is point out layers. Because this is like Photoshop, um, Pixlr uses layers. Currently, we only have one layer, but we want to put another layer behind our cat person. So what I'm going to do is go to layer and I'm going to add an image as a layer, but first I need to find an image. So when you're considering what you want to put behind, <laughs> behind your, um, your weird surrealist collage, you need to hit the internet and find some good background pictures. So I was trying to think of something really random to put behind this cat thing. And I was thinking about using a jail cell. I don't know. It's like an interior space. It's kind of dismal. I don't know. It just seemed random. So I found this picture over here that I really like. And I will point out the best pictures to use when you're taking things from the internet are things that have a lot of pixels in them. So if I zoom in here, you can actually see that this one is 1920 pixels by 1200 pixels. That's a lot. If you can get in the thousands, that's going to be a nice clear picture for you. If you're going to use um, a picture that is in like the low hundreds, like 400, 300, by the time you blow it up to make it your background, it's going to be really, really blurry. So more pixels is better and you'll just kind of figure it out as you are playing around with it. But once you find your picture, you can right click and save your image. Uh, cellar door, that's fine. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go back over to Pixlr. And as I mentioned before, you're going to go to layer add image as layer. So this is going to take the image that I just found, the cellar door jail cell picture, open it up, and now it's a second layer. And you're like, whoa, where'd my picture go? Well, your picture is underneath the one that we just put in. So we need to move this background layer on top. And I'll tell you that right now, we can't do that. If you try to move it, it's not going to go anywhere because it's locked. So what we have to do is click here on these three dots. And um, ah, here it is. This option where it says unlocked, locked, we need to click unlocked. Now we should be able to drag, yes, our background layer underneath. Now, another cool thing is, as long as we are selected on the top layer, which is confusing because it says background, I can rename that if I want to, um, but the cat layer, I'll call it, if you are selected on that and you are on your selection tool, the thing that says arrange, I can take this and move it wherever I want on top of my, my new background. So I think it looks kind of good in a corner, maybe like this. All right, we could get super advanced here and also flip the picture if you want to. Whoa. When you're on this selection tool, you can flip pictures horizontally. So that way, if you don't like the way it's facing, you can face it the other way. I don't know why you'd want to, but you could also flip things upside down, whatever but I actually really like the cat sitting over on this side, looking more towards where the cell door is. I could resize him a little bit if I wanted to. I could bring him back down. But if you are trying to move that picture around 
and you're like, it won't click, it won't click. It's probably because you were accidentally clicked on this layer. It's really important when you're doing Photoshop and Pixlr that you are selecting the layer that you want to work with. So if I want to change something in the background, I have to be selecting the background. If I'm trying to move the cat around, I have to be selecting that layer like that. Okay, when you are all done and you are really happy with your new digitally altered collage, then it is time to save it so that way you can upload it for your assignment. So we just need to go to File, <clears throat> Save. You can save it as a JPEG or a PNG file. I prefer PNGs because they're usually better quality. I would change the name of it. You don't have to, but it just makes it easy to find. Cat person. And then you're going to download it. And just to make sure you know where to find that, if you click on your folder, it will be right where all your other pictures are. So when you go to upload your pictures for your assignment, it should be right there where you're used to find them. So I hope you have fun doing this. I know I had a lot of fun making these weird combinations of animals, people, whatever, um, and then reinventing the backgrounds. I can't wait to see what you guys make. Have fun.